Okay, this information has been given to me by a person I've known for six months, and he's uh, proven to be highly credible in the past, and he is reporting that uh, he's got uh, information from an actual uh, chemtrail geoengineering engineered aerosol uh, pilot who is inside these programs. So this is new information. You can also find this posted on geoengineeringwatch.org, Dane Wigginton's site. Uh, the rest of this, I'm just going to read the posts that uh, that record his contact with this pilot. All right, December 8th, 2014. My cousin, who was fired by our dictator just before making rank withheld, sent me information given to him by a friend who is still an Air Force pilot. This pilot is saying that he flies chemtrail flights. This pilot told my cousin that this global geoengineering effort goes by the name of, quote, Indigo Skyfold, unquote. At least within the circle of pilots and aviation crews that he works with, they are told to fly specific routes and satellite comm links control the aerosol dispersal patterns. He says that they only make course corrections from time to time and perform landings and takeoffs. Pilot navigation and maintenance crews are rotated constantly, and only spend about 18 months at one given base. He states that this is to keep pilots and their families from making too many friends and ending up with loose lips. Plus, they also rotate between day and night flights, one base for daytime flights and one for night. Each base covers a 250-mile zone, and each fleet squadron of planes cover three pl states, or an even larger swath of ocean. They are told to simply do their job and shut the F up. Their superiors will only tell them it's a matter of national security and, quote, <clears throat> Without these flights, our enemy's newest technological weapons of war could easily penetrate America's airspace at will. We are dedicated and committed to keeping our allies safe from the same skyward threats, so we extend the arm of protection to those countries who support our efforts. Hostile nations are also building atmospheric shields while in the same discourse, trying to explore weaknesses in our ever-developing air and space-based technologies." Unquote. Sounds more like a PR statement to me. I think this pilot either believes what he is told, or he is simply trying to sugarcoat their genocide project. December 8, 2014. My firewall detected multiple intrusion attempts when I googled the Indigo Skyfold code as well. Zero information found on the internet for this operation. That is unique. I received a rather lengthy reply from the chemtrail pilot. Here is that text from his or her email. First of all, I would like to say, I do not agree with my mission assignments, but what soldier ever truly does? Several of us have considered bucking the ranks and going AWOL from time to time. We are kept in the dark when it comes to getting honest answers about what we are really spraying. Should they discover that we or our families are actively inquiring about your so-called chemtrails term, then automatic and swift disciplinary action will be taken. HARP and RADAR are two other non-allowed research subjects. Unless our children are learning about these in base schools, we cannot educate ourselves or our children through any public tutoring system. I would not intentionally spray my children with fam or family with toxic aerosols, but as you must know, 80% or better do not have any family or children. Indigo pilots are chosen from the top ranks within the Air Force, Navy, and Coast Guard. Most of the pilots are, quote, hardened to humanity, unquote, and could care less about killing off unwanted or leeching aspects of America and the world. I swear to you, the majority of the pilots are like machines. I call them tanker terminators. I should not be telling you this, but nearly one-third of all flights are being orchestrated from small unnamed islands, where newly constructed bases are being built at a rate of eight per year. On these extremely remote islands, there are harp arrays of every possible design, with many arrays surrounding these islands within the depths of the ocean itself. The Navy has developed sophisticated underwater construction technology that allows fully autonomous robot submersibles to travel great distances 
and even manufacture parts for these massive underwater arrays as they progress across the open sea floor. Every time that you see or hear about military exercises at sea, they are basically there to give support and resupply their army of underwater robotic minions. There is possibly one aquatic robot per plane, and will soon be double that. You will never be able to Google Earth search any of this, other than an occasional error in blurring some island bases or smudging images of underwater arrays. It is impossible to locate all these artifacts. They even pay paint fake clouds over some of our island installations to keep prying eyes away. I have been shown some of these images by civilian friends. That is the reason I know this. I completely understand your concern for human safety. But here is the kicker. We are shown videos in our training of catastrophic destruction to our homeland by very sophisticated weapons. Then told that these will be the consequences if we don't fly. Our efforts in building a defensive atmospheric weapons shield are the only min missions of its kind in the world. We are paid more than any other pilot for our service, other than Air Force One pilots who make as much or more and are kept in a dark secret world for their own protection. They tell us that secret secrecy is our protection and not to listen to any public rhetoric. We all know about Cyber Program Flashpoint, or FP-03, as it is known within the veteran community. This program is a self-destruct sequence that can be remotely activated from any ground, water, underwater-based, or other air mobile unit. The signal is encrypted through three satellites and cannot be jammed or blocked. Any other given, at any given moment, you could have only 15 seconds to make your peace with your god. <coughs> They tell us that FP exists to keep planes from accidentally going down in heavy, heavily populated areas. They can remotely detonate our planes over safe zones, but in the back of your minds, our minds, we are pretty sure this is a fail-safe program to keep pilots from turning over assets to any public, private, or civilian authorities. Have you ever seen any member, any member of the crew survive the few crashes that have occurred? Every plane that has gone down was completely destroyed for good reason, I'm sure. We risk our lives in more ways than one every single time we fly, especially night flights. They are ordering us to fly at lower and lower altitudes. We feel like massive dark force empire crop dusters and know that one night Bubba or Billy Joe will fire their long rifles at us when we spray their moonshine making operation or pass over an illegal Mary Jane crop. I know for a fact that some planes have been shot at and subsequently brought down by mostly Russian, Chinese, and Korean weaponry, but the media will never cover these events as they are not allowed to report on our flights either. <coughs> that must be true, for I have yet to see a detailed or in-length report of our missions on any public venue other than conspiracy shows and anti-government websites. I risk everything for disclosing so much information, and you will find very few like me. Even my own flight crew would have me arrested and court-martialed if they knew of this dialogue. That is why I cannot email you directly. But from what your cousin tells me, you are risking, you are also risking everything just to get this information out to your colleagues. I salute you, sir, for standing up to the establishment and Big Brother. I would love to go home tomorrow and not rack up one more single minute of flight time except for a sweet little piper cub or a rat tail barn racer. I miss those beautiful blue skies from my youth and I, <clears throat> and I am ashamed for hazing over that dream. Maybe more of my fellow pilots will read or hear about this and decide to come forward as well. I only know a small fraction of the larger picture as they compartmentalize everything. Should I become aware of any new significant developments, I will email your cousin. And now this is the uh, man I have contact with. He says, he senses a wavering within the ranks and feels that a kind of mutiny is being boiled to the surface of this whole geoengineering global whitewashing, if you catch my drift. My cousin still has friends in high places, too, so he is helping to protect the pilot. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, this came December uh, 11. Last word from the pilot was, quote, All pilots on leave are required to report to their CO by December 15th for special training operations to qualify for Indigo Phase 2 flights, expected to be initiated by January 21. Those were his words, not the actual Air Force message. He wanted me to stress that. He believes that the focus of their flights will be moved to areas east of California and Texas in order to progress the drought further into the heartland. Plus, he feels that a very new, extremely toxic chemtrail mix is going to be sprayed using new technology that makes these special chemtrails completely invisible. Atmospheric shield of protection. He doesn't believe that either. So that's the end of the message from this uh, chemtrail pilot. And I just, uh, from my own experience, I've had a lot of contact with this guy for six months via the, via the internet. And uh, basically everything he's told me has turned out to be true. So I have no reason to doubt any of this. So hope you can forward this. This also points out how difficult it is to fight this program. Because the people inside the program are not subject to public opinion or uh, public information sources. So we need to brainstorm and come up with a way to shut down this program as, as it is actually heating the planet and killing everything with the elevated UV and toxic metals. Thank you for listening.